the Lord Jesus Christ has commissioned each of us to be his witness with the power of his Holy Spirit. We are to witness with the way we live and with what we say. We are to demonstrate the power and love of the Lord. All right, let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 107, verse 2, as we get ready to make our declaration this morning. Psalm 107 and verse 2, the psalmist says, Psalm 107, verse 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of of the enemy. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say what? Say what? Say so. Say what God has done for you. The fact that he has redeemed you. That he has done a great redemptive work in your life. That you are the redeemed of the Lord. That you are redeemed from every curse of the Lord. That you are redeemed from sin and sickness and disease. And uh, you're redeemed from uh, whatever you know, has been introduced in this world because of the fall. Christ has redeemed you and me. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So God wants us to say, say it boldly. Now, saying has a powerful result, consequence. Every declaration of faith we make is backed up by God. That's why in Hebrews 10, verse 23, it says, Don't cast, or, let, us, let us hold on. Let's put, put, put it this way, Hebrews 10, 23. Let us hold fast to the confession of our faith without wavering. Because he who promised is faithful. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. So when we are saying, when we are declaring that we are the redeemed of the Lord, we are declaring our faith in what Christ has done for us. Jesus has done for us. This for us. He's redeemed me. Hold fast to the confession of your faith. Because he's faithful. He will make it good in your life. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Keep saying what the Lord has done for you. uh, Through his cross. Through the shed blood. So let's stand up to our feet please this morning. And hold our Bibles high up in the air. Let's make our declaration together. Let's say so. Because we are the redeemed of the Lord. Let's say this together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing. To many people, I receive His Word. I believe His Word. And I live by His Word. Christ is my Master. And to Him, I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you. Say hi to the person next to you. Give them a good smile. And uh, get to know their name in case you don't know their name. And you can be seated. So, uh, let's get into the Word. We'll spend a few moments here. The Word won't be too long. Um, We're going to conclude our series here on winning souls, how to win souls and make disciples. Uh, We started this several Sundays ago, and uh, this is the uh, part four, the last message in the series on how to win souls and make disciples. We are um, uh, just talking about some basic strategies, simple things that you and I can do as believers Uh, To win people to the Lord and to disciple them, right? We covered three simple strategies so far. The first one we talked about was invite and pray. Just invite people. Invite them to explore Jesus. So next Sunday, big Sunday is a great Sunday, great day to practice this. Invite somebody to church, right? Now, as I mentioned, you're not talking about inviting somebody else from a different church. You're talking about inviting people who don't know Jesus, right? Invite them uh, for Big Sunday. Invite and pray. Strategy number two was to connect and impact. That means you engage with them in a way that they, that they understand. You connect with them. Uh, talk about things that interest them. And then you, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you see how God would use you to impact their lives. Uh, the third strategy we talked about was to understand and reason understand what they believe 
and engage in meaningful conversation and discussion with them. Don't be afraid to reason with people. Right? Let them ask questions. It's okay for them to ask questions concerning the faith, concerning Jesus, concerning the Bible. Engage with them meaningfully. Have meaningful conversations. Uh, so understand and reason. But we're not getting into arguments. We're not getting into fights. It's, we want to do our best to answer questions and explain why we believe what we believe. And so that's the third strategy. Uh, today we will talk about the last one, which uh, we're calling a witness and demonstrate. Uh, let's turn to the Luke 24. We'll read a scripture passage. Luke 24 verses uh, 30 to 53. Luke 24. We'll read verses 30 to 53. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. And they said to one another, Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked with us on the road, and while he opened the scriptures to us? So they rose up that very hour, and returned to Jerusalem, and found the eleven, and those who were with them gathered together saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. And they told about the things that had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of bread. Now, as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled and why do do doubts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me and see, for a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy and marveled, he said to them, Do you have any food here? So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all these things must be fulfilled, which was written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, To all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endowed with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass while he blessed them that he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. So this records what happened right after the resurrection of Jesus. The period between the resurrection of Jesus and his ascension. So he comes and shows himself alive to his disciples. And uh, they're a little taken aback. Still a little unbelieving. Still a little doubtful. So he... So in order to really convince them that they're not you know, hallucinating, they're not seeing something in the, in the air, he says, you know, do you have some food to eat? He actually eats it before them. So they know that this is indeed the risen Lord. Right? It's not something their mind uh, is playing games with them. So Jesus has finished this work of dying on the cross, being buried and being raised up from the dead. He's completed that work. But now there's a huge task in front of of his disciples. He's going to go back to heaven. But there's a huge task to be completed. Which is to go take this message. Of what Christ completed on the cross. That repentance and remission of sins in his name. Needs to be proclaimed to the, all the nations. A big task to be done. Now Jesus could have gone about this in so many different ways. He could have said boys. Thank you for being with me these three and a half years. I'm going back. And I'm going to send all the angels in heaven. And they're going to go across all the nations and proclaim this good news. And we'll get the job done in half a minute. <laughs> and then you'll all come home. He could have said, okay, I'm going to go up to heaven. Once I'm seated at the right hand of my father, I'm just going to 
sound out from heaven. There's going to be a voice that you're going to hear all over the globe. And everybody's going to fall on their knees, get saved. I mean, he could have gone about this in so many different ways. But he looks at his disciples and he tells them in Luke 24 and verse 48, You are witnesses of these things. Okay. We've got a big task ahead of us. And you're the ones who are going to do it. You are witnesses of these things. To be a witness means you're going to attest to a fact. You're going to give testimony to a truth. Something that you've experienced, seen, heard, and observed. You're going to stand up for that. You are witnesses of these things. Of what you've heard and seen me teach and do. You are witnesses. But... I'm not going to send you out alone. He says in verse 49, I'm going to send the promise of my Father. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to endure you with power from above, with heavenly power, with divine power. He's going to give that to you to enable you to be my witnesses. So that commission, we know and we understand, we believe, has been handed down to you and me today. We are witnesses of Jesus Christ. And we have been called to be witnesses by the power of the Holy Spirit. So put your right hand up and say this with me. I am a witness for Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's say it one more time. I am a witness for Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Each one of us, we are His witnesses. But not just by our own abilities. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit. That power, of course, is for us to do something with it. We're supposed to demonstrate it. And so that's why we're titling this strategy. We're calling this strategy, Witness and Demonstrate. Because you're a witness with power. So witness and demonstrate. And Jesus intended that. He wanted all of us to be witnesses with power. He reiterated this and we see this... um, uh, repeated in some other places in scripture. Let's refer to some of them. Acts 1.8, he said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witness. So you're going to be my witness, but look, it's going to be this combination. It's going to be with the power. Be a witness with the power. He said, to the uttermost parts of the earth, to the far places of the earth. In Acts 4 and verse 33, the Bible records, With great power... The apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. So they gave witness to the resurrection, how? With great power. And what was, what was the outcome? We know there were miracles, there were healings, there were signs, there were wonders, there were un- all these things happening. So they gave witness, they testified, they attested uh, to the resurrection of Jesus, to who Jesus was, with the great power. Or in Acts 5, verse 32, just one more reference here on this. The the apostle said, they said, we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit who's given to us. We are witnesses, but we're not alone. The Holy Spirit is with us. So here's the thing. All of us are witnesses to Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's for everybody. It's not just for the pastor, the preacher, the evangelist. It's for every believer. For all of us to be witnesses for Jesus with the power of the Holy Spirit. So we witness and demonstrate. We witness through the life we live and what we say. How do we witness? We witness through the life we live, how you live, and what you say. And we demonstrate through the power and the love of Jesus Christ. So we're just going to break this down and talk a little bit about it and we'll close. Not too long. So tell your neighbor he's going to close sometime. (laughs) All right. So we witness through how we live. How do I witness? How do I testify to the reality of Jesus Christ? How do you and I as a believer, how do we testify to this? Well, through the life we live. That the life we live should point people to the reality of Jesus Christ. That by looking at us, the way we speak, the way we live life, the way we do things, the way we handle circumstances, situations, it should attest to the reality of Jesus, the life we live. And in fact, if we don't live a life 
that testifies to Jesus, then, you know, what we say doesn't carry much weight. It kind of, it loses its impact, its effectiveness. So it's so important for us when we want to witness for Jesus, it's our life that will speak volumes to point people to Jesus Christ. Just one reference, scripture reference here. It's Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. Paul writes, Do all things without complaining and disputing or murmuring, that you may become blameless and harmless children of God without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world. So he says, you know, the world we live, it's crooked and perverse. But we've got to shine as a light in this, in this dark world. But in order to let our light shine, he says, you know, how you do things. Do all things without grumbling, complaining, murmuring. So that, so that people can see you're different. Are you with me so far? Right? How we do things. Do all things without murmuring, complaining, grumbling. So that you could let people see. Let people see your light in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. Dark world. So we can just break this down to simply say, you know, we've got to live that life. So let's say, you know, for, for those of us who are students in, in school or college, you know, how you live your life right there has a powerful testimony. It has a powerful effect on, on, on pointing people to Jesus Christ. You know, you've heard about these examination paper leaks and, and you know, students cheating in their exams. But you as a believer, you refuse to cheat. Even if your neighbor says, hey, just look, I will give you all my answers. Just give me 100 rupees. You see, see. So, no, I'm not going to cheat. It's a simple thing. But the way you live, the stand you take, the choice you make is going to point people to Jesus. It's very powerful. Now, some of you have heard my story uh, in engineering college. And the first year when you go to college, engineering college, uh, you don't have a choice on who your roommates are. You know, you just get put in with whoever. And uh, so I got it in, in the, you know... Uh, staying with some people but for my second year I chose to have a friend uh, and so both of us were in the same room we were uh, roommates so our second third and fourth year were together now both of us came from Christian backgrounds and uh, but over the course of three years our life just went totally different directions he became and he just got into drinking partying he won the smoking championship in our college (laughs) and me I started Bible studies started a prayer fellowship (laughs) Reaching all across campus. So like we were totally different people, but we were roommates. People couldn't believe that. And we were good friends. And in the room, we would have discussions. He would ask things. Like, I mean, we were both Christian backgrounds, but we would talk about the Bible. And I didn't force the Bible on him. I just answered his questions. Just roommates. Now, in the course of that four years, uh, his life, I mean, he didn't make a commitment to Christ. We parted ways. And uh, both of us eventually went to the U.S. to do our master's. He went to some part of the U.S. I went another part. And we lost contact. But I think it was during my second year in the, in the U.S. I was in Ohio at that time. One evening, out of nowhere, I get a call. And on the other end of the call is my roommate from college, engineering college. So I, says, I just called. I just, he tracked me down somehow. He got my number. He said, I called, called. And this is what he told me on the phone. He said, Ashes, your life still speaks to me today. That's what he told me on the phone. In order to say that, he called me from some other part of the U.S. to track me down. I said, thank you. And, uh, you know, just let, let it that. So our life, the life we live, leaves an impression on the people we, whose paths we cr- cross. You never know how powerful that impression is. And I'm not in touch with him, but we've gone separate ways. But I know that, you know, there's a seed that's been sown in his life that God can use. Now, when I was in Ohio, uh, again, when I, when, when I went there first, I didn't get, you know, I, I had to look for a place to stay. And I was staying off campus. And, and uh, I, I needed to move. I shift places. So I was going to a particular church. I just let them know, you know, I'm looking for a, a place to stay. Uh, I need to move. So they had put it in the church bulletin. Now that particular Sunday, a guy walks into the church service. That's his first time to that church. He's walking into the church service. So one of the, uh, you know, the people at the entrance hand him this church bulletin. He takes the bulletin. He walks right in. He sits there for a few minutes. He sees all these strange things going on. People lifting hands. And he's not used to that kind of worship. So he walks out of the service. But he has the church bulletin in his hands. <laughs> and in the church bulletin is this little thing that here's this Indian guy looking for a place to stay. So he said, and he was looking for a roommate. So he calls me. Say, hey, what's your name? You know, and I say, my name is Ashish. And he starts laughing at Hashish. I said, no, 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 no. It's, it's Ashish. <laughs> oh, he's like, what kind of name it is? <laughs> I said, no, no. 
So I said, okay, that. And uh, anyway, so he said, you know, I have, you know, he's got a house, he's got an extra room that he's looking to fill up with a roommate. Would you like to come? So I came here. Yeah. So I said, you know, I have no transport. Uh, so he said, he, he said, I'll come and pick you up. So he came and then he pulled up. And you know, when he pulled up in the in the place, the parking lot where I was staying, he had this loud. I said, okay, okay, this is the guy I'm going to be staying with, okay. You know, and he comes in, he pulls out, it's a red pickup truck, he gets off, he bangs the door. He says, hey, you, and we meet. Anyway, takes me to his place, and it's got this music, heavy metal music, loud in his truck, and we go. He shows me his place, and inside I'm praying, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I need to go to a Christian home. <laughs> I need a Christian roommate so that we can pray together and all that. I'm saying, God, what's going on here? This guy isn't. So he's asking, he's interviewing me, and this is our interview questions, you know, do you drink? I said, no. And he said, I want you to let you, let, let, I want to let you know I drink. Okay. Do you bring girls home? I said, no. I said, I want to let you know I bring girls home. Okay. So, like, this is the interview questions. <laughs> right? And uh, all of that. So we went through the interview. Uh, then I said, you know, I'll get back to you. So I go home. I'm praying. Oh, what is it? But I just feel the peace of God. And, um, and uh, you know, if you want, uh, here's, this is the verse that really came to my heart. God says, the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. <laughs> I mean, the house, the house you're going to go to is going to be greater than this. I said, okay, I'm taking it. You know, it's out of context, but God is speaking. It's okay. So I call him back and I say, you know, uh, his name is Jeff. So I said, Jeff, uh, I, I want to move in. And he says, man, I don't think we, are, we fit. No, I, are you sure you want to move in with me? I, and I said, yeah, Jeff, I want to move in with you. But the thing that's in my heart is this, you know, light is more powerful than darkness. If I step into that environment, this is one thing I'm expecting. I'm expecting him, his life to change, not mine to change. I'm going in with that. Yeah? And so I moved in. And so um, I lived with Jeff for about two years, I think. Um, uh, and Jeff, was, Jeff and I were roommates. And uh, yeah, in the beginning when we go, went grocery shopping, he would have a six pack of beer and all that. It's okay, you know. And uh, yes, in the beginning, he brought girls home and all of that. And he was listening to all these heavy metal music, all of that was going on. And, uh, but we used to have, he used to drink his beer, I'll drink my glass of milk, and, you know, <laughs> and we'd talk. <laughs> and, uh, it, but we were talking. We'd talk about the Bible. Uh, he'd ask questions about the Bible. I'd answer. I never preached to him. I would only answer his questions, what he is asking. I'd share. And uh, slowly on his own, on his own, and I did not tell him to do any of this. On his own, he stopped bringing girls over. I don't know if he went to their house. That's a different story. <laughs> but <laughs> that stopped on his own. He packed up all his heavy metal music. He got rid of it. And he started listening to Christian music on his own. On his own. He started, you know, trying to read the Bible. And he started going to church. He couldn't come to the church. I was going to be scared of these people lifting hands. <laughs> he found another church he was okay with. He started going there on his own. And the last thing to happen was, you know, one day I came back from college and he said, hey, Go check the uh, refrigerator. So what happened? There's no beer there. <laughs> I stopped. I, he said, I decided to stop. He stopped even that on his own. You know, and uh, this whole life changed. And then he, you know, uh, and I moved. I moved uh, to the East Coast. And, um, but he eventually got married. I was, uh, attended his wedding. And uh, I think it was towards the end of last year, which is like a long time after that whole, all that journey. He sends me an email. And he sends me pictures of his kids and uh, just to let me know. And he's still strong with the faith and, and all of that. And this is like years later. Now, I never preached to him. I mean, necessarily like preached to him. But it was just, I lived with him for two years. And God did the work. Amen. So our lives can be such a powerful witness. The way we live can be a powerful witness to the reality of Jesus. The reality of and, and, and Jeff, his life was so turned on. He was totally opposite. You know, when we come to a red light, he'll pull down his window. He'll, hey there, have you heard about Jesus? <laughs> I was like, hey Jeff, relax. <laughs> he was like on fire, you know. And at the checkout counter, he's like, you know, he'll start talking to the, uh, the person there and start, you know, witnessing. He was so on fire for Jesus. Uh, there was a place in Cleveland that's called Coventry where all the, you know, at that time, they, all these skinheads, punkheads, all black dresses, heavy metal hanging out, they'll all hang out there. And so Jeff and I, that was our hunting ground. We'd go there, we'd purposely sit next to one of them and start talking about Jesus, you know. And uh, I mean, his life was so changed that, that, that God began to uh, uh, just use him uh, and, uh, uh, and, and make him a witness. So how can we be witnesses to the life we live? You know, in our workplaces, 
um, in, 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 in the boardroom, in the conference room, when you're on, on engagements with your customer, when you're out there on sales and, uh, and you're or negotiating with people. And all of these things, how you live should point people to Jesus Christ. Amen? Should point. They need to see Jesus in our lives, the way we live. Second, we witness through the words we say. Of course, we have to speak the gospel. We have to let people know uh, about Jesus and he, that he's the one who's changed our lives. So a witness who doesn't say anything is of no use, right? So they say, do you believe in Jesus? You don't believe, you know, don't believe in Jesus? You're not saying anything. It doesn't have any impact. So you've got to say, you've got to tell people that it's because of Jesus, the life is what it is. So 1 Peter 2, 9, just one reference here. The Bible says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It says, you and I are his own special people. Why? That we can proclaim, we can publish, we can announce the praises, the virtues, the greatness of of the one who called us out of darkness. So we need to publish. We need to proclaim. We need to let people know. His greatness. He's the one who's changed our lives. So we must also demonstrate the power of God. So witness and demonstrate. God wants his power to flow through each one of us. So put your right hand up and say this with me. God wants his power to flow through me. The power of the Holy Spirit flows through me. To heal. To deliver. To do mighty miracles. God's power flows through me. So we are his witness with power. The power of the Holy Spirit. To flow through all of us. Right? And uh, so demonstrate the power of God. Expect God to use you in works of power. Use your authority. We know the scripture in Mark 16, 17. These signs will follow those who believe in my name. They will cast out demons. They'll speak with new tongues. They'll take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, will not hurt them. They'll lay hands on the sick and they will recover. It's for every believer. I expect God to use you that way. Right? In His name. You step up. You pray for people. You minister to people. So somebody has a need. You say, hey, can I pray for you? Can I, you know, can I just ask the Lord to, you know, whether it's healing, whether it's some other miracle. It doesn't matter. If it's a situation, pray about it. If it's a financial problem, you pray over it. Expect God to do amazing things. Uh, in, in people's lives. It doesn't matter even if they're not believers at the moment. That's the whole purpose. We want to demonstrate the power of God. So then they can believe. And we also demonstrate the love of God. Which means be compassionate. Do good to people around you. Let them know that you genu- genuinely care for them. I close with this verse. In Matthew 5.16. Jesus said, let your light shine before men. That they may see your good works. And glorify your Father who is in heaven. How do we let our light shine? Let them see your good works. Let them see the good things you're doing. Works of compassion, of love, of kindness. Let them see that so that they can glorify the Father who is in heaven. So do that. So demonstrate His power and His love. So all of us are people who can win souls. We can make disciples. We can all invite and pray. We can all connect and impact. They can all understand and reason. Now, understanding and reasoning requires a little bit of preparation. You know, you need to uh, prepare yourself. But make the effort to do that. Understand people. Reason with them. We can all witness and demonstrate. We can all do that. He's, he's called all of us to do it. Amen? So let us all win souls and make disciples. Let's stand to our feet, please. Father, we just thank you. For making us co-workers with you, Lord. That each one of us here are co-workers with the God of heaven. Thank you for giving us this privilege of being witnesses for Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, that none of us will be ashamed to be a witness for Jesus. Because he is real. He's changed our lives. He means everything to us. Let us not be afraid. Let us not be ashamed. Father, we pray that even now you will empower each and every one of us to be bold witnesses. Empower us by your spirit that we will witness and demonstrate the power of God. Father, we pray that the gift of the Holy Spirit will flow through every person. That God, you will work signs, wonders, miracles as we step out and pray. As we step out into people's lives, into their circumstances, into situations. That you will work through each one of us, Father. Do mighty things. Do mighty things through each one of us. 
We just thank you. Help each one of us, Lord, to win many souls, to disciple people for your kingdom. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Let's just get ready to close, please. Now, unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask, think, or imagine, according to his power that works in and through us, unto him be glory in the church through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being here. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website www.apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.